Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef Dan. I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your early slate on Turkey Thursday. All right. I know you guys are excited for the food, but you get to enjoy this game between the Lions and the Bears while you're eating with your family, preparing all that delicious food. Now, before I deep dive into this intriguing game, even though I'm lying, um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessNetJSD. And also sign up for the Patreon. You see the Patreon right here. Get signed up. Only $7.99 a month. You're getting DFS content. You're getting betting advice. Everything is involved. This is not one of those subscriptions, Roto Grinders, any of those those signups that you know you sign up for like 30, 40 bucks, and you're, there's no one to help you. All right. You're you're looking for maybe you have a questionnaire, questionnaire. We have a group, we have a community that can help you with that. I can help you with that, all right, to get you to those winning ways, all right. Now let's deep dive into this game between the Bears and the Detroit Lions. First, let's look at the injury report. Justin Fields is probably not going to play. He has two back-to-back -back DMPs. Akeem Hicks, who's the run stuffer, he's probably not going to play. Allen Robinson is... Probably not going to play, but we, we will see on him. He's a little bit closer. Um, Damian Williams is, is officially out. But guys that are trending towards the upward trend is Eddie Jackson, Darnell Mooney, Marlo Edwards, uh, Tashawn Gibson, and Marquise Goodwin. All right. They, those two last two were full participants. If we're looking at on the Detroit Lions side, um, Trey Flowers is not looking like he's going to play. Um, who else? That's pretty notable. It's, uh, it's pretty ugly. Vitae, he's probably not going to play, even though he's a little bit of a journeyman lineman. But other than that, limited on Jared Goff. That's the big play right there. He's more of a 50-50 call. They're, you want to wait and see on Thursday morning and see how he feels. If not, then they're going to, what is it, David Blow. And we seen them uh, a th like a couple Thanksgivings ago. They got David Blow and they got Tim Boyle. So it's going to be between those two. Probably it's going to be Tim Boyle. He came in uh, uh, last week's game against Cleveland, stepped up two interceptions. Uh, it's going to be an ugly game. If there's no Jared Goff, this is going to be absolutely ugly game. So now let's see what captains that I like. Okay, let's pick and choose this because this is a mess. This is stuffing, all right? It's everything all mixed together. Um, somehow it tastes good and it's watchable. So we're, we're going to see if we're going to choose any Detroit lion, Deandre Swift is going to be your number one option. Big, big game. The last two weeks, well over a hundred yards. This is their only answer. Okay. They can run the ball. They have a solid enough line. They invested in it and they can utilize Deandre Swift. Okay. He's their X factor getting a ton of carries, 33 carries against Pittsburgh, 14 carries against Cleveland. Both games, 130 yards and above. He had a TV, TD last week and chipped in with four targets and six targets the last two weeks. This man is a lock in each and every lineup. You can have him as a captain. You can definitely have him as a flex as well. Uh, let's move over to the favorite choice for the Chicago Bears. David Montgomery is back. Okay, he's back. And I think he can have a big blow-up game, something similar to what he did already to this team in Detroit in week, four, in week four, where he had 23 carries, 106 yards, and two TDs. He can definitely repeat that performance. I 100% think he's going to get an end zone. I don't know about two, but definitely look for that prop. David Montgomery TD and a win. I think that's going to be very lucrative and something that you should attack um, for Thursday, all right? Love him at his price at um, 11200 Obviously, it's a little bit more if you put him at the captain spot, but he is a lock. If you're just looking at the Detroit Lions, fantasy points allowed to running backs, they're all the way at the bottom right here. It's the Jets, then it's the Lions, 31st ranked, allowing 117 yards uh, a game to running backs and a TD. Okay, so that is pretty big. That is huge. That's why I love him. At his price, all right? So we got Swift, we got Montgomery, Andy Dalton, the veteran with Justin Fields, probably trending towards being out. You got the veteran gunslinger in there. As long as he's not making mistakes, then this team has a chance. 11 for 23 last week, a horrible uh, passing percentage, but came through with two TDs and a very high QB rating. Was it because of all the TDs? I don't, I don't know. But 
As long as he does not turn off the ball and give the Detroit Lions opportunities, then they have a very good chance of getting away with this this uh, win and move on to next week. So I love Andy Dalton at 10,400. All right, we'll put him in there. Next guy we're going to look at, we have Darnell Mooney. This is the speedster for the Chicago Bears, okay? Obviously, the, the big, big problem on this defense is the Lions rush defense. That's why you don't see that many wide receivers go off. But definitely it can be a, a game where they get up big with the pass and then they finish them off with the running game. So Darnell Mooney can definitely take the top off of a defense. He had five receptions, 16 targets. Um, obviously, from Andy Dalton, he really, really locked in on him. Came through with 26 fantasy points. He's getting better and better each and every week. We saw the potential last year. I think he's really coming into himself this year. I love Darnell Mooney at 9,800. So we're going to definitely play him. Tim Boyle, that's a full fade. All right, full fade on Tim Boyle. If Jerry Goff plays, then you can consider him at flex. That's a strong maybe. That's a strong maybe with an oblique. You don't know how how a fresh he's going to be. It could be one or two QB hurries, and he's already aggravated the injury. There's so many factors here. That's why if it's if it's Nick Boyle, <laughs> if it's Nick Boyle, no, okay, no. If it's Jerry Goff, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe. If we're looking for the second best Detroit Lion, okay, the second best Detroit, just stick to these two guys and you should be fine. You got Swift as one. TJ Hawkinson is the other. They are standout tight end. Obviously, he had a rough week against Pittsburgh. He came back with six receptions, eight targets. This is the main guy. It doesn't matter if it's blow. It doesn't matter if it's golf. It doesn't matter if it's, what was the other guy? I don't even care about these quarterbacks. What is the other guy? Tim Boyle? It doesn't matter. Hawkinson is the second best option. He's going to get targeted no matter what. Um, Chicago defense, would they focus on him? I think they need to they need to address the running game because they don't need DeAndre Swift to run wild. That'll be really, really embarrassing. Um, that'll be their Hawkinson's gonna be the second of their worries, okay? But Hawkinson should definitely get his targets, get his catches, hopefully maybe a touchdown. We'll see, depending on the quarterback. Because that's going to be really, really ugly. Let's move on to our next tier of plays, okay? That's our first tier. You got Swift, Montgomery, Dalton, Mooney, and Hawkinson. Now this is our second tier. We're going to begin the second tier with Allen Robinson if he plays. If he plays, um, he's been missing the practice the last two games um, with a hamstring injury. So you really have to be delicate about that. If he does not play, we will move on. And then we'll move on to Marquise Goodwin. He has similar traits to Darnell Mooney with the speed factor. That's why you see him with uh, that 26 catch average and a 49 long. He came through with a nice deep touchdown, four for 104 in a TD with 23 points. This is the number two wide receiver. If if Allen Robinson is out of the game, then Marquise Goodwin would be a very solid backup behind him okay let's continue to move on down this there's going to be a lot of value here all right a lot of value if i'm looking for a wide receiver for detroit obviously we had a running back we had a tight end if i'm looking for a wide receiver then i'm on st brown their rookie would be the guy that's been the most consistent this year okay not saying he's going to have a groundbreaking game but someone that's just been you know here and there getting solid amount of targets it would be Amon St. Brown, all right? He doesn't have a touchdown yet this year. I can turn around for Thanksgiving, all right? All right, he has the hair like that looks like stuffing. Maybe, maybe. You never know, all right? These are some very horrible options on the Detroit side. You're going to have to get comfortable with them. One, one play that I do like that you can play as a captain is the Bears defense. Defense will be viable on one side, and that's going to be Chicago side. I'm not playing Detroit Lions defense. This can be a factor here, um, especially if Nick Boyle plays or blow either one of them. Then they can create turnovers that will give the Bears defense opportunities and put them in good positions. Hopefully they can get into the end zone with those opportunities. Obviously, the 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 injury to their center, maybe some more sacks come in. That can be a big factor. Bears defense is a double thumbs up on that one. Um, 
Secondary options for the Lions will be Jamal Williams. If they're down big, then they'll utilize Swift and Jamal Williams in that passing game. That'll be the extension of their of their run, okay? If they, things can't get going there, they might do a lot of screens, dump off passes to get these guys in space, all right? These are their X factors, especially Jamal Williams for what he did last year with the Green Bay Packers. Um, let's continue to go down. Cole Komet is an option, but with Jimmy Graham coming back into the fold, he has stepped up as the the number one tight end, and I gotta go with him. I gotta with his price at sixteen hundred. He's been looked very frequently in that red zone area, back to back games with three targets, and most of those targets are in the red zone. Just has to come down with the touchdown. That can happen this. Thursday. So I'm very intrigued on his price and the upside of him. He can definitely be a very nice fill-in at the back end of your flex. So I love Jimmy Graham. Um kickers are viable. Uh not the not the Detroit kicker. Okay. Not the not the Detroit kicker. We're not playing a Detroit kicker. If you're gonna choose a kicker, you're gonna choose Cairo Santos, okay? They can barely move the ball, and then so, Rojas is so bad that the Giants cut him. And now he's on this team missing field goals. And they, he doesn't get even any opportunities to kick a field goal. So we're going to avoid that problem. All right. Anyone below or lower than that um, is a no. Maybe Demir Bird with a lucky touchdown. The lowest I would go actually would be Jimmy Graham at 1,600. Um, if, you, if you're comfortable with the rest of your lineup, like you got your captain, and you got your four flexes, and you just have enough salary with one of these guys at the bottom, and you want to just throw a dart, fine, fine. If you feel comfortable with the rest of your lineup, there's a, there's some lineups where everything is boom, is perfect, but that last flex, whatever it is that you just needed salary just to fit in, um, is just good enough so you don't mess everything else up, all right? I, I've seen lineups win like that as well. All right, so that will be the breakdown for our Thanksgiving number one game, all right, between the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. Let me know down below in that comment section if you see another captain that you think will have a better um, game, if you like another flex play or any play, period, that I did not speak of. Let me know in that comment section down below. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD, and I'll be back with another video very soon. Peace out, guys.